Hello. So we are going to be discussing drawing nodes in Toon Boom Harmony. This is a short tutorial for beginners that are new to the program and don't really understand how the drawing node works, since it's called a drawing node, but it's more like a folder than a drawing. So we're going to discuss that. And the most important thing starting off is to go to the top right of any of your windows. You'll see a plus and an X. Click the plus and open up your node view and then drag that somewhere that's convenient for you. The second important thing is to go to edit, preferences, advanced, and click this top button, support overlay and underlay arts. That gives us access to these four options over here. Uh, by default, you only have access to the line art and the color art, but it's kind of important that you have the overlay and underlay. What is a drawing node? If you hit Control R, you'll get this option, Add Drawing Layer. You can also get a drawing layer by coming over here and clicking Plus Drawing in the timeline. Very important, a drawing will only appear if it's plugged into a composite connected to the display. So. This display is connected over here. You can see up in this window, display. And if we draw something on the drawing, it's visible. But if we unplug it from the composite, it will be invisible and we won't be able to affect it. So despite it being called a drawing node, it is less of a drawing, as in like a piece of paper, and more like a folder. So it's a folder that contains multiple drawings. You can see this if you go again to the plus, but we go to drawing substitutions. We have this little window. So because there's no drawings, there's nothing here. But if we draw something, it'll add a drawing one. If we go to a frame that doesn't have anything on it, we can make a drawing two. We can also use these buttons down here, which is create empty drawing and replicate drawing. If you've created a drawing, so substitute one, and you don't want it, there's not really a simple way of getting rid of them, but if you go down to your edit and keyboard shortcuts, then you go to exposure sheet and delete selected drawings. You can set it. I have it currently set to the num key one. You set it to one or whichever key is convenient for you and you hover over your window and click the button. It'll get rid of it. By default, you don't really have that option. Um, so it's a convenient thing to set up. Generally, when you make a drawing in a file, like this for example, so this file is called Drawing1, and then you click on the orange layers property on the drawing node, you get all of these options. If you go to the Drawing tab, you can see the path. So this is telling you that this drawing, named Drawing, is in the Elements folder in the file that you created originally. So if you open up that file, and go to the elements folder, you'll see all of the drawings from everything that you've done in this file, even old drawings. So this is my third save on this file. So it has everything from all of those files put in here. This is important because that means that this drawing has a specific identification number. So if I was to copy Control C, Control V, this drawing and place it and then edit this drawing it will also edit it for the other drawing as well if you want a drawing with unique information but you want it to have the exact same object on it first of all you can make a new drawing and then simply just copy the information over so copy the drawing paste the drawing now you've got two separate drawings that aren't affected by one another you can also Control C, right click, paste special, follow these information. So always create drawing files, create new columns. And um, so you'll get another drawing that it's an exact copy, but it has unique information on it. So whatever you do to this drawing won't affect this drawing. This folder contains drawings inside of it, pieces of paper. Each of these pieces of paper have multiple layers, kind of like a schematic for a building uh, where you have transparent pieces of paper all on top of each other with different floors. That's what these arts are. 
up in the top. So overlay, line out, color out, underlay. You can see it more clearly in the drawing view. So if you go to line out, you should be able to see the line out for the drawing, but you should be able to see anything else. If you click this button up here, create color out from line out, click, and then go to the color out, you should see this highlight, which means that there's an invisible line being placed here that you can now drop a color into. So if you go to the drawing node, you can now see the different layers. If you want a drawing that only has a specific layer showing, so you only want to see the line out or you only want to see the color out, there's two ways you can go about it. If you go to your node view, hit enter, you can specifically search for the line out or the color out. So plugging one of these in will only show one or the other. This can also be helpful if you have something on the color out, but you actually want it to be in front of the line out, you can plug them both in and then swap the positioning. So now the thing on the color out is in front of the line out. Another way to do the same thing, but you can't do the layering, is if you just click into the properties on the drawing, go to drawing, you can individually turn off and turn on the layers. If you make an object and then you make a second object on the color out on a different layer on the drawing, you won't be able to move both of them at the same time from the one selection since they're on different layers. So what you do is you go to your tool properties, apply to line and color out. So you can select everything. It says line and color out, but it also affects the overlay and underlay. There's a lot of tools in the tool properties that you can use for uh, drawings. So if you have everything selected, you can flip left and right. You can flip up and down. You can rotate. This one is useful if you have a character that has a lot of hands and then suddenly it's decided that, oh, the hands are a bit too small. We need to scale them all up. But there's 70 hands. So what you do is if these are on different frames, like so, so this is two different drawings. If you look at the drawing substitutions, selecting one won't select the other anymore because they're no longer in the same substitution. So you click these tools, which is apply to all frames, and you can grab both of them now, scale them up, and then now they've both been scaled. Uh, drawing information is shown in the timeline as exposure. So this little gray block is an exposure which is basically telling the program that I only want to see this drawing for two frames and I want you to turn it off. So if you're drawing an entire sequence of things, you expose, draw again, expose, or if you want something to be exposed for a really long time, you can hit F5 and it'll expose everything, or you can right click and extend exposure. If you're using the drawing node and you want to see previous frames of your animation, so if you draw a single frame like this, if you go to the next frame, you can see what you previously done. So you can turn on this little one, onion skin, it'll also activate this. So you can see the previous frames. So if you draw another frame like this, and go to the next one, you'll see both of them. Um, you can affect the onion skin with this slider on the timeline. So we're going to give a final example of everything that I just talked about put into use. So we're going to make a new drawing, call it ball. Plug it into the composite so it will show up in the timeline and in the camera view. We're going to make a second drawing just called ground. We're going to make a ground for the ball to bounce on. So we're going to grab the line tool. And we're going to draw a line like this. And as you can see, it's only exposed on one keyframe. But if we go to the end of the timeline and hit F5 or extend exposure, it'll be exposed throughout the entire timeline. Next on the ball, we're going to get our ellipse tool 
we're going to zoom in and we're going to draw a ball up in that corner. That's going to create a substitution or a piece of paper. And we're going to want to make more of these, but if we go to the next frame, it's going to vanish. So we expose it. Go to the next frame where we want the ball to move, but we can't see the previous location. So we go down to the onion skin, and now we can see where it was previously. So we can paste a new drawing, move it over, expose it for two frames. So as you can see, our issue now is that the ball isn't touching the ground because we misplaced it. What we can do is we can grab the floor and bring it up, or like earlier, we can go to our tool properties and click apply to line and color art and apply to all frames. If we then drag select over all the previous drawings, we can move them all despite being on different layers. We can also scale them up So if we want to preview all of this, we go to the start of animation, click start, go to the end, click stop. And when you hit play, it'll now only animate what's in that timeline. You can also hit repeat or loop, and it'll loop the animation. So now let's add some color to our ball. So again, everything is on the drawing layer, like so. We can turn the onion skin off for now. So everything's on the line art, but we want color to be on the color art. So we hit this button up top and it'll create a little highlight telling us that there's now an invisible line. We get a fill and we fill. And then we go through and do that with each of the frames. So that is how drawing nodes work in Toon Widow. I touched on most of the important things in relation to the drawing nodes. A lot of stuff was limited due to the fact that I didn't use pegs or deformers throughout this. But for the next few videos, I will be discussing both of them. So we can see how they all work together. And I'm also going to go into different ways to manipulate the line tool and drawings and shortcuts and all of that in the future. So thanks for watching.